name is Marie Walsh from Limerick Institute of Technology and I want to talk to you about the physical and chemical properties of metals. First of all, what should we already know? You should know where metals are in the periodic table, how they bond and some of their physical properties. What do you want to know about the chemical properties of metals? The role of electronegativity? what oxidation means, which metals are most reactive, and examples of reactions with oxygen and acids. Metallic atoms have low electronegativities. In other words, they lose their outer shell electrons easily. Once an outer shell electron is lost, the atom becomes a positively charged ion. In other words, a cation. The chemical properties of metals vary depending on their position in the periodic table. Typically, because of their low electronegativity, metals react by losing electrons to make them stable. Loss of electrons is also known as oxidation. So we can say typically metals oxidize. If we look at the periodic table, we see group numbers. The group number is linked to the oxidation number if we're talking about the main groups. So for example, group 1 metals lose one electron from their outermost energy level of each atom to become stable and we say their oxidation number is 1. Group 2 metals or alkaline earth metals need to lose two electrons to become stable, so their oxidation number is two. If we look at the block of metals in the middle of the periodic table, we often see them called transition metals. Can you explain what transition means and why these might be called transition metals? Transition means change, and the transition metals are important because they have variable valencies or oxidation states, with the exception of zinc, which has an oxidation state of 2. Transition metals also give colour to the world, partially linked to their variable valencies. Many of them are used as catalysts and we can see some examples of transition metals and their uses here. Here are some transition metals and their uses. For example, iron for steel, copper for wiring and pipes, platinum for jewellery and catalysts, and titanium for paint and medical implants. Many metals are reactive, but some are relatively stable or unreactive. Can you name some unreactive metals that you've come across? The reactive ones are the alkali metals or group 1 metals like sodium. Pure sodium is very reactive and is stored under oil. It can be cut with a knife because it's relatively soft and it reacts explosively with oxygen or water. Group 2 metals, the alkaline earth metals, for example calcium, are also reactive. When metals do react, they often react with oxygen in the atmosphere. But this again will vary. For example, potassium from group 1 will burn in seconds, whereas iron reacts with oxygen over time, sometimes years, to produce what we know as rust. Sometimes, for example, when aluminium reacts with oxygen, an oxide layer is produced. This reduces the shininess of the metal because it's no longer the pure metal, but the outer oxide layer can actually act as a protective layer. Many oxides of metals are basic. In other words, they will give a pH of greater than 7 if they dissolve in water. A few metals produce what we call amphoteric oxides. Do you know what amphoteric means? 
it means that the oxide can be react as either an acid if it meets a base or a base if it meets an acid. This is useful for producing multi-purpose neutralizing substances. Examples of amphoteric oxides are aluminium oxide and zinc oxide. And here's a place where you find zinc oxide. Can you think of where this would be a useful substance? Some metals react with mineral acids to produce salts and displace hydrogen gas. An example of a mineral acid would be hydrochloric acid or HCl. Can you predict which metals would be most likely to react with acid? Could you guess what happens when potassium reacts with hydrochloric acid? Let's see. Potassium reacts with hydrochloric acid to displace hydrogen gas. And the salt that's produced is potassium chloride. Could you write a chemical formula equation for this reaction? Can you think of any metals that definitely don't react with water or acid? And can you describe how this helps with their uses in the real world? Let's look at a summary of some of the chemical properties of metals. We've looked at just some of the chemical properties of metals. We know they react by oxidation and the reactivity depends on the position in the periodic table. Most metals form basic oxides and group 1 and 2 metals react with mineral acids. The transition metals are less reactive but they have a range of uses. Thank you for watching. Please check the project portal for more resources on the physical and chemical properties of metals. Thank you.